In this video, I want to go over how to perform a dependent t-test. So for this example, we have 10 individuals. They're in a clinical trial for a new medication that will lower heart rate. For each individual, their heart rate was taken before administration of the drug, and then it was taken after the administration of the drug. The reason why we're using a dependent t-test is because we're matching the heart rates so for before drug and after drug with the subject in which the measurement was taken from. So we're not saying that we have subject one measurement for the before drug and then we paired it or put it beside say subject number 10. So that wouldn't be matched. Another example would be if we had these same 10 individuals take the SATs we measured their score or you know took their score they had it the first time and the second time and we wanted to determine if they improved on the second time that would also be a matched pair design and we got johnny here taking the drug You'll also want to divide over the standard error of the mean difference scores. To calculate for that, you can take the standard deviation of the difference scores. So the value you get for the heart rate of the after drug treatment minus the before drug treatment in our case over the square root of the number of subjects or the number of pairs of observations, which in that case is 10 because we have 10 individuals in the clinical trial. And we'll want to follow the null hypothesis significance testing. So let's form our hypotheses. So in our case, we want to determine if this drug decrease his heart rate. So we'll say that our heart rates, right, in terms of population mean because we're trying to infer about the population after taking the drug. So the heart rates after taking the drug will either be equal to or greater than that before the drug. So it either has no effect or it, it actually increases heart rate. For our alternative hypothesis, we will state that the heart rate will be less than the heart rate for before drug. So, in, so the heart rate after taking the drug will be less than that before the drug. So in this case, we're using a one-tailed test and we need to use a T distribution, which as Dr. Jones mentioned, is different than a normal distribution in the sense that lower sample sizes will generate a distribution that is flatter and less normal. But as you increase the sample size, it will become more normal. Another aspect of uh, T distribution is that it's dependent on degrees of freedom, right? So your degrees of freedom equals the number of individuals you have or subjects minus one. The analogy that he used, of course, was the balloon. So let's say we have 10 subjects. Uh, we have 10 balloons. Each one gets to pick a balloon. So after nine pick a balloon, you have the one individual left. 
and they're left with whatever balloons left over. And that's why we say the minus one, because one of those values can't change. They're going to have whatever is left over, essentially, in layman's terms. Of course, you'll want a alpha level so you, to define your critical region. In many conventions, we use the 0.05%. If you guys remember, this defines the type 1 error, so the error in which you reject a true null hypothesis. So we're saying 5% of the time we're going to reject something or reject a null hypothesis that's true. So in our case, we would reject the null hypothesis. The type 1 error in our case would be that we state that heart rate decreases after taking the drug when it actually increases or the it stays the same. So that would be what it's implying. We need our sample data, so this would be like step, step 3 of NHST. We have it right here. And then now we got to calculate for the T obtained. So let's do that. So remember, we need our different scores, right? So we'll subtract from the after drug heart rate by the before drug heart rate. Take it for all, right? And then we'll want to average this out. So for that, you can simply just add up all the different scores and then divide by n. I have Excel, so it'll do it for me. So we get negative 39.6. And if we go back to the formula, we can plug that in, right? So what did I say? 39.6 negative. Remember the negative. Okay. So... Now we'll want to calculate for this. So the formula you'll use is the standard deviation of the different scores, right? So I'll write that. Over the number of pairs we have, so number of subjects, in our case 10. And when I mean pair, I mean pair of scores, because each subject has a pair of scores, two scores, so two heart rates, okay? So we'll calculate for that. Of course, you, can go, you guys can ask me if you need help calculating standard deviation, but I'll do it just right here. Okay, so we got 22 point Two seven. Let's just round it at that. Yeah. This is from a previous example, previous video. Twenty-two point. What I say? Two seven. Yeah. Okay. And we have ten individuals, so we're just gonna square that. And that's not the right answer because, like I said before, that's another from another video. Okay, so 22.27 divided by square root of 10 gets 7.04, 7.04. So let's plug it in for this, okay? And let's divide. Remember that negative sign, so. Yeah. Cool. So we end up getting a value of negative, yeah. negative 5.625, okay. So that would be our T obtained value.
Now we want to compare the t-obtained value with the t-critical value, which in our case would be a value that resides in the critical region, so pass uh, 0.05, right? So our t-critical value in the case of our design will be negative 0.1 or negative 1.83. You can simply just look at the T distribution table if you need to find this value. So I pulled it up right here. We have nine degrees of freedom and we're going for a one tailed T test, right? So right here. So it ends up being like 1.83. And like I said before, our t-obtain value was something like five, what, what was it, five, eh, I have it somewhere. Negative five, six, two, five, okay. Negative five point six two five, we compare it. So, of course, negative five point six two five is less than negative one point eight three. So that means we got our T distribution. Let's say this is our critical value somewhere right here. That means our value is going to be like over there. So it's in the critical region, right? It's in this region. So of course the last step is to accept or reject the null hypothesis because we found the t obtained value to be less than that of the t critical value we can reject our null hypothesis and support the finding that heart rate will decrease after taking this drug hope this video helped and as always, feel free to contact me with any questions. Thank you.